Hey there, Castaway Crew, Hello. and welcome back to our channel. Come along with us for a wild ride as we dive into the bittersweet symphony of our off-grid living journey. A modern twist on alternative lifestyles. Today, as promised, we're taking you back to our block of land in Pilton, Queensland, where it all began back in 2020. So we'll be sharing some of our thoughts when it comes to setting up a solar power for your property and crafting a reliable water supply and implementing alternative concepts and ideas to ultimately enhance our lifestyles. And when I say that, I'm actually talking about you guys as well. We believe that there are much, much better ways to live than what is taught by the mainstream narrative. And I think that our society as a whole could benefit greatly if more people kept an open mind and adopted some of these basic principles to ultimately depend less on the system and more on themselves. Now, buckle up and hold tight as we hit the road to explore the roots of our dreams. Now, before we dive too deep, just a real quick apology here. Now, before leaving the house, I didn't even think to check if all the Canon batteries for this camera were charged. So, we hit the road with a bunch of redundant gear that we couldn't even use. So, for today's vlog, we're rocking Janelin's iPhone 15. Whoa. I see an iPhone! No! What do you see there? No, 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 what? No! no. <laughs> Hopefully, it's adequate. So, unfortunately for today, no fancy gear, no microphones, just pure, unadulted, raw content for this one. Please forgive the hiccup guys and we hope that you can still soak in the content that we have in store for you today. Let's go! Again, if you guys remember our uh, most recent video, the virtual tour we did of our house in the Philippines using the Microsoft Flight Simulator and Revit, you know, Autodesk uh, software and all that sort of stuff. Those are the exact tools that we used to buy this block of land because we weren't even able to come here physically to look at it during the COVID lockdowns, which is when we purchased it in 2020. Um, so we flew here on Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'll tell you what, it was true to life. Darling so, Down Zoo. Yep, there's a zoo here there before. So guys, we're going to show you in this video those uh, architectural renderings that I did and the floor plans, what I actually designed for this property with the shit that's already there. So I had that drawn in and I did all the landscaping just like I've done for the house in the Philippines. So we're going to drop this in this video so you guys can have a look at how the end product was going to, uh, how it was going to look. The road to the left here, this is the road that we normally would come down. So that's a much rougher road, but it probably knocks about 12 to 15 minutes off of the trip. 
there's Steve at Nicole's house. Oh wow. Yep, they're definitely moving in. Look at that. There you go. That's just stunning. Look at that home. Absolutely. Wow, they're in already. Oh look, and they fenced it. It's for sale again. It's for sale. Here is the view. Our shed where our shed is this is how it looks like right now when we owned the property we didn't have any of this um, fencing out the front and they've also put a uh, property pole for the electricity smart meter and for the switchboard over there so they've got the solar connected and they're obviously feeding back but this is interesting we sell this property honey? Um, last year, December? Last year? Yeah, it's December last year. Um, and again? They put up it on sale again. So it looks like it's uh, going through a few hands. It's being handled. This is 2,400 square meters. Just a tad over. Um, so as you can see right in front of you, this features a 10 meter by 9 meter shed with a high bay door right in the middle and then your standard 2.4 meter doors on the sides that's the central ones are 2.7 so this is the shed that Janelyn and I hand lifted sheet by sheet door by door piece by piece from the front nature strip of Auntie Gina's place in Ipswich into her backyard there was a lot of steel and it was a heavy lift and especially a difficult day when you're sick and sniffling and sneezing and coughing and your lungs feel like they're about to fall out of your throat um, so yeah, this was the vision. As I mentioned earlier, if you guys haven't seen our virtual tour video that we did on our home in the Philippines just recently, then I suggest you go and check that out. Um, that talks about how we designed the property using all kinds of innovative software, Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is how we actually bought this property. And if you give them a panoramic view just out there, I landed the Cessna right on this block, and I tell you what, there was not a lot of difference between how it looked on screen and how it looks in real life. To be frank, it was virtually identical, minus some of the AI-generated bushes and shrubbery, but it was all in the right location. The elevation data, the terrain was literally the same, even the colors of the fields where you can see the difference between the brown and the green. It was all pretty much spot on, and that's why we bought the trigger to buy this property, and that's where our dream of living off-grid began. So, here's the shed pedestrian access door. So this shed features 24 solar panels on the roof. We have an array of 12 on this side, which is the western side, and an array of 12 on the eastern side. So these are hooked up DC coupled. Now I'll get into this a little bit later on in the video, or let me know in the comments below if you want me to do a detailed video simply about um, solar, DC coupling, AC coupling, batteries, inverters, the different kinds and the different uh, the different setups that you get. So basically this, sol this shed here was all done with controllers and it has an inverter in the shed which we can't actually show you because we don't have access since we don't own the property. And that looks like it's the owner there now. So I'll have a bit of a chat with him, but yeah, that's how it looks. Bore up in the corner back there as well, which we have grilled. Um, so that was all going to be filtered with um, UV, UV filtration systems as well. But as you can see, we obviously didn't get around doing it, so, which is a bit unfortunate. But, you know, it is what it is. The house was basically going to be right there. And I've got some architectural renderings and designs that I've done. So I'm going to post them in this video to give you a, a, an idea of how it looked. Um, the building, the landscaping, and how I sort of envisioned it all coming together. So if you're interested, That'll be in this video also. But let's have a chat with the owner and see why he's selling. 
So there guys, there you go. We just ran into the new owners uh, and it sort of cut me off mid-sentence. So I can't remember exactly what I was talking about, but I'll just review the video. I'll go through it and I'll see what I've left out, see what I've missed, and I'll just do a bit of a catch up in the studio just to fill in the missing pieces. But as you can see, there it was. So 24 solar panels on the roof, a DC coupled system, which went to two charge regulators, two charge controllers, Victrons, which were then ready to feed the battery. So they were just terminated an isolator switch. And as soon as we got the batteries and we had the inverter connected to those as well, we were able to pretty much use that energy and generate power for whatever we needed power for. And that was solely on the shed. And the way that the inverter was designed, that was an AC coupled system, just like any standard, uh, standard inverter that you might find. Um, that was going to have two cables once the house was built run underground to the shed and there was going to be probably another 24 panels on the house as well and they were going to be connected AC coupled to that inverter which would give us direct power without charging the batteries and then extracting from the batteries it was basically direct DC in and direct AC output into the house um, that just mitigates any kind of losses that you'll get in the exchange between AC and DC so from the panels to the batteries back to the inverter back to the house um, and also any losses that are dissipated in heat um, other than that in the grand scheme of things that's about as simple as solar becomes so yeah we're about to head off and get back to the house so I'm just going to do all the stuff that I mentioned for you and if you have any questions just be sure to put them down in the comments below um, anything you'd like to know and I'll endeavor to get back to you as soon as I can to answer any any qualms that, or any questions that you might have regarding solar setups uh, water systems tanks filtrations pumps etc etc so yeah thanks for watching guys and um, I'll see you on the next one hey crew so we're back here in the studio and as you could probably notice since we filmed our vlog down in Pilton I've gotten a little bit of a haircut and a tiny bit of sun so it's been a few days um, we've been spending time with family but I realized that I sort of went off on a tangent during the vlog and then I completely lost my train of thought when the new owner rocked up and I do apologize for that so let's just cover some quick key points here that I really wanted to summarize and this is just a real raw discussion uh, that we're going to have so I suppose the first thing that we want to talk about is the question of why why living off-grid well I guess the major things is one Jen and I love being closer to nature and we like the idea of having self-sufficiency and our own independence especially during the COVID lockdowns which were absolutely horrible in Melbourne uh, which is where we're from if if many of you who've been watching our channel since the beginning would know that we moved up to Queensland uh, from Melbourne and it was pretty brutal down there with the lockdowns now from our perspective we've seen how fragile the system that we actually rely on can be I mean Look at the grocery stores, food and, and tin goods were just completely out of stock off the shelves. You know, people went into panic buying and into this just psychotic mode where it's like a fight or flight response for self-preservation. So they were going into shops, they were fighting with each other over all these resources that they thought they needed. All the groceries, they just went out of stock. So food was getting scarce, things like toilet paper were getting scarce and you realize how fragile that system is that we depend on paycheck to paycheck, week to week to buy groceries. We don't have reserves, we don't know how to grow our own food and modern society with the pace and the speed at which we we work and we run our lives it's just you know we we don't realize how weak we are and and how quickly everything around us can crumble if something as, as small as a virus hits us so we believe that being closer to nature having that connection with our ancestry i believe that's the way we were designed you know it's only recently in modern times where we've had depression and and suicides people's minds are just just overwhelmed with what we're taught to think that we need in life and i believe in hard work but not in the modern sense in which we have to do it today where we're forced to work to pay criminal prices for housing especially in the major cities where everyone's just hustling for money no one's got any time for anybody else uh, there's no more community in the cities and it's just it's a very sad and lonely way to live 
Um, and we simply don't believe in that for ourselves. I mean, other people could be perfectly happy with that, but for us, it just doesn't work. Um, it's not what makes us happy. So that's why we're choosing to pursue this dream of self-sufficiency, uh, self-sustainability, and being more dependent on our own capabilities rather than giving all of our liberties and freedoms to the government. E every dog is in it for himself. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there. So that's why we have this very passionate, I guess, this very passionate desire to provide for ourselves and to live off grid. So let's discuss some of the challenges that we face in this journey. For those of you who understand interest rates, obviously everybody in Australia knows about it and are probably quite grumpy about it too, but they went up 14 times, almost consecutively over the past year. So that basically means, in short, that interest rates increase, which brings down your borrowability, uh, your affordability, how much you can loan to buy a property, and that is supposed to reduce the house prices or the prices of property, which never happens. It hasn't happened the last however many times because this is cyclical, it happens every seven or so years. And it didn't happen this time. In fact, they were at an all-time high again. So surprise, surprise there, not really. Um, so our goal was to rent out this as well, to have the house built down in Pilton and move into that. So that way we would actually be saving money on our monthly repayments and we would own more property. So it was all good in theory. However, things don't always work out. So it's always important to have a contingency or a backup in place. Now, looking back on that, I feel like it was actually a good thing that came out of it because if you think about it, you know, if you're going to live off the grid, if you're really going to push for this sustainable living, what's the point of investing so much money in all these solar systems, inverters and batteries and, and, and pumps and whatnot, you know, and you have a nice big property where you can grow your food and you can grow your vegetables, yet it's still in debt. So you have a loan on that property. If anything ever happens again, like a lockdown, and for whatever reason you can't work, well, you foreclose, you forfeit that property, and it gets taken away from you. So. The way that things worked out, I think are pretty good because the price that we bought Pilton for compared to what we put in, compared to how much we sold it for, we still did, did really, really well out of it and we can't complain. And now we've managed to build a house in Philippines for cash, which is a home that nobody can kick us out of. We don't owe a single penny on it and we can still do exactly what we plan to do in Pilton. However, the block is smaller. It's not 2,400 square meters, it's 850. We didn't build a big house. We didn't need a big house, you know? Enough entertaining space for outdoor living, which is what you mainly do in the tropics. You know, if you're going to have a home like that, you want more outdoor space. The interior space is mainly for sleeping. You People, Filipinos even do their cooking in the dirty kitchens outside, not so much inside the house, you know? So um, we didn't take too much land up and we still got a decent amount of space to be able to do our little veggie garden and the dream that we really want to achieve. So. It's like we've been redirected from Pilton to the Philippines and honestly I think now when I look back on it it makes a heck of a lot more sense because we don't owe a dime on the property and we can still set up the solar, we've already got the water tanks in built, we can do all our pumps and filtration just the way that we had it or had envisioned in Pilton but now we have a house that basically costs us nothing to run, it doesn't cost us anything to own and it's ours. We're not reliant on a system. We're not reliant on a bank. We're not reliant on a job. It's purely ours. So these are the challenges that we face with Pilton. However, the redirection was a good thing. Now I just want to talk about the benefits of strategic planning, right? So the whole reason we want to live off grid is because we know that we can do so without any compromises. Um, with the advent of modern technology, the batteries, the solar panels, this stuff is evolving every single year and being in the trade for so many years and having installed so many systems I've realized that it's a really attainable thing without actually making any compromises or sacrifices to a modern comfortable lifestyle. Um, it does take planning so we will try to make a separate video uh, just drop your comments in the comment section below if you would like us to do a video about the more in-depth calculations and what it actually takes to set up what is correct for you and for your property. So really I think you have to start from ground zero and always over spec, never go below because trust me the money that you outlay in the beginning 
is gonna be worth it for that little bit extra, which is gonna save you a ton in the future, you know, because as soon as you modify and add and change things, you know, you're paying twice and it's a double cost. So starting from ground zero, you've got to pick the property in the right location, something that's not heavily forested, so you don't have too much shade. Um, and then you just plan your landscaping around that, so you can obviously influence the way that the house takes on heat, the way that it collects water, and also make sure that the roof isn't shaded by, by any, any large trees or, or forests. So you can optimize your solar generation, but also keep it insulated and the walls shaded at the same time. So orientation, positioning, elevations, all this has a lot to do with how the house performs, um, especially in terms of solar. Being an installer for so many years and having dealt with these systems, I know how they perform and I know what the capabilities are. So truly, you don't have to make any sacrifices and you can live just as comfortably as anybody else in the cities and you wouldn't even know that you're off the grid. So that was a big thing for us, you know, we don't like paying criminal prices for houses that make you feel claustrophobic and everyone's just packed in right next to each other and all you're doing is spending your entire life at work and then commuting to work and back in hours and hours of traffic. That's why we live in Toowoomba and that's why we wanted to live off grid. Probably those are the primary reasons and also not to be dependent on a government and on a bank but to be more dependent on ourselves. So I guess they're the major points. We want to live off grid because we believe that humans were designed and created to live coherently with nature and if it ain't broke don't fix it. We've been doing it for thousands of years. Jan and I we love the outdoors. We love you know lusciousness and, and, and beautiful trees and gardens and parks. We enjoy our time spent outside. We like gardening especially me. I enjoy landscaping a lot. I like getting my hands dirty and all these things are actually good for your health. You need the fresh air, you need a little bit of dirt under your fingernails. It's good for the immune system. Um, all these things, you know, we're designed to live that way of life. We're not designed to be shackled up in an office for, you know, nine to 10 hours of the day and then stuck in a vehicle for another however many hours and then be inside the house, cook your food, which is probably usually horrible for you because it's all fast food or it's all processed and then you go to sleep. Then we wonder why people are getting cancers early, why they're getting all sorts of different schizophrenias and Alzheimer's and dementias and then they go, they go and pump themselves full of, full of drugs and full of medicines that again big corporations and companies create and if you really dive deep into it, it just it's this destructive cycle that just perpetuates over and over again and we wonder why our society is so broken we have so much depression and so many mental issues and children with autism and and but <laughs> it's the way that we've designed our society we, we've got nobody else to blame but ourselves and the fact that we just comply and we're complicit with all of this and we don't do anything about it well we've got nobody else to blame but ourselves so we like watching all these alternative living channels that are really showing people living off the grid, building tiny homes, setting up their solar, setting up their water tanks and their wells and you know pumping water out of creeks and doing all this sort of stuff, which is somehow becoming harder to do. There are more regulations and legislation around building tiny homes, how long you can stay at a property for. It's, it's all very suspicious and it all seems to be quite funny. The more people that do it, the more the government wants to get their hands on it and, and tighten the chain around it. So again, you just need to think about that for a little bit and why. It's all about control, all right? Let's be honest. So that's basically our whole idea of living off the grid. It's to be self-sustainable, independent, and to still have a comfortable lifestyle without sacrificing the modern amenities of today, which with the advent of modern technology is very doable. So why not live a stress-free life with all of today's comforts available to us? We're making less of an impact on the environment, becoming stronger, more independent, more knowledgeable individuals, and we're getting rid of debt, we're getting rid of the stress and the biggest killer that is harming humanity is stress. So I guess in the end guys we're happy that things have worked out the way that they've worked out, that we have been redirected to the Philippines because it makes more sense to have an off-grid property that you actually own outright that nobody can take from you rather than investing all of that into something that can be swept away in the blink of an eye. So I guess at the end of the day guys 
Um, let us know if you agree with our philosophies and give us some comments in the section below. Like, share and subscribe to the video and get engaged. I really want to know what you guys think, what are some of your own experiences, if any of you out there have actually done something similar to this and built a tiny home or you know are living the off-grid lifestyle, please chime in and give us some of your tips and tricks. We would love to know how life is for you, how it's all working out and is it really all it's cracked up to be. So guys, I hope you like this video, I hope you're enjoying the content, I hope you all stay safe and healthy out there and until the next video, sayonara.